Hello Isopod fans, this is Wally with Supreme Gecko, Supreme Isopods coming to you once again bringing you another Isopod setup review. This one's going to be a good one. Stay tuned and let's check this out. The Isopod Vlog Now Isopod fans, you've seen me do some Isopod setup reviews on dairy cows, but this is going to be a little bit different. This is from Quentin and he's set up his enclosure a little bit differently and we're going to find out how in just a moment. I want to thank everybody that submitted an Isopod setup review and I hope that everybody is gaining some education, some information from these setup reviews because I just love doing them. If you have an Isopod setup that you'd like me to review, go ahead and send it to me either on Facebook or on Instagram. I'll go ahead and review it. Keep it about a minute or so. Tell me about the isopods that you uh, have in your enclosure, when you got them, how old the enclosure is. Tell me about the substrate, the leaf litter, the wood, anything that you can tell me about the isopod setup. Tell me about the foods that you're feeding, how you're misting your enclosure or watering it, anything that you can tell me about your isopod setup that helps me understand how you're keeping your isopods so I can do the review, but keep it around that one minute. Let's go ahead and take a look at Quentin's dairy cow setup here and see if there's any comments that I'd like to add. Okay, here we go. Hey Wally, I've got a 10 gallon here with some dairy cow isopods in it. I just started keeping them, so there's only about 10 in there currently. Um, I've got some coconut fiber substrate in the bottom with a ton of oak leaf litter as well as a ton of sphagnum moss. Uh, I've got a couple pieces of the cork bark for them to hide in as well as uh, this fun little doodad. Okay, let's stop right there. Beautiful, beautiful setup. I love how big this is, a 10 gallon. You can really watch your dairy cows move around. You can really watch how they're growing, how they're multiplying. Beautiful setup lots of substrate and I love the 10 gallon the glass tank so that you can see how much moisture you have on one side and how much dry area you have on the other side we've got the cork bark we've got the sphagnum moss we've got the leaves everything is looking really good but I do have some comments here for the substrate it sounds like Quentin is using cocoa fiber only I really really like to have some kind of a dirt compound in that substrate if you want to mix the the cocoa fiber with the dirt that's fine, but you really have to have some kind of a dirt, more firm compound in there other than the cocoa fiber. Looking at the leaves, these are live oak leaves. I'm not a huge fan of live oak leaves, simply because I've used them and I really haven't seen my isopods tear into them like a, a big, uh, normal looking oak. These live oak leaves are smaller. They have a, I guess, a waxy kind of a surface area, and it seems like the isopods take longer to eat them. Big pile of sphagnum moss over in the, the left side here. That's perfect. The isopods will just absolutely love that. The cork bark going between the moist area and moist area, and the dry area. It looks really good. Let's keep going with this. Don't know what it is. Um, but then I also went out and I found some succulents on my uh, front flower bed, so I figured I might as well throw them in here in the moist side and just kind of let them sit. And if they survive, great. If not, well, I'll pull them out. But uh, yeah, there's a little bit of food hiding in there. I've been using some fish food, uh, chiclet flakes or petals, or whatever I have on hand right now. But I do have some uh, dried fish coming in the mail. But yeah. Uh, how am I doing? Thanks. Okay. Now, I want to start off with the ventilation. There's just so much ventilation in this enclosure. It's just perfect for these isopods. You have that screen top, and that's just absolutely perfect. Way to go. I love the live plants and the sphagnum moss. That's really cool. I'd like to see this tank in maybe four or five months and see how those plants have taken off. That, that looks really nice. You're feeding cichlid flakes or pellets, and I think everybody that ke has kept fish in the past when you said chicklids gives a little bit of laugh because they've heard that saying before. But uh, that's good for a start. You really need to have other foods in there. You really have to have some vegetable foods in there as well, like pumpkins or squash or zucchini or carrots, something additional other than just the flake food. 
you're getting some dried uh, fish, that's great. That'll add some more protein to these uh, dairy cows. They're a high protein requiring isopod, so you want more protein in there, but you really need to expand their diet a little bit too. Now it's hard to see, but I think Quentin does have some decaying wood in this setup. The cork bark is great for a hide, but you really need that decaying wood for the isopods to eat as well. I looked closely, I didn't see any calcium source. So you actually need to have some eggshells or some calcium carbonate, some kind of a calcium source in this enclosure. I thought for a second that you had a heat pad on this enclosure. I think it's for another enclosure that you have next door to these isopods. So uh, adding heat to isopods is a little bit of a concern for me because it's just really hard to control and it's very easy to get that heat too, too warm. But I think, Quentin, you're doing fine with this because I don't think that you're adding, that you've added a heat mat under this. Overall, I would give this enclosure a yellowish color between uh, red being something's going to go wrong with the enclosure, yellow meaning that it's good, but you're not really going to get uh, a lot of babies, to green where you're going to get a lot of babies. I would put this in the yellow, yellow, green area because, uh, again, you have a couple of concerns. The substrate, I think, should be a little bit more dirt-based. Uh, I think you need that calcium source in here, and you actually need to feed some more protein foods, more vegetable foods, have a different variety of foods that you're going to feed these isopods. Overall though, I think this is a really nice setup. You're going to get babies. You're just not going to get the number of babies and, and that might not be an issue for you. You're just not going to get the number of babies if you make these small adjustments. Thanks Quentin for sending this in. Thank you everyone for watching. I really appreciate your support. Give it a thumbs up if you enjoyed this review. Subscribe if you haven't already and hit that notification all if you would. Thanks again for watching.